Hello everyone, how are you today? It's Kay. So this is a video session. It's not live stream, but this is a video session. And this is 18th of February 2022 on Friday. So happy Friday everyone. And uh, good to see you again. I hope you're having a great Friday today. So uh, yeah, so this is a video session because um, soon after I have to go out and most likely I can be back at uh, 6 p.m. Dubai time, which I usually do the live stream at that schedule. So um, yeah, instead I decided to take a video and upload it so that you can at least learn something new on my YouTube uh, channel. Oh, speaking of the YouTube channel, finally, the number of sub subscribers on my YouTube channel became over 50k now. So I really thank you so much for your continuous support and participations uh, because uh, without your supports, I won't be able to do this every day and I won't be at I won't be able to achieve that such a you know big milestone so uh yeah when i started the youtube um a couple of uh, years ago three years ago i never expected um the number of subscribers would increase that much but uh it's such my such my honor to be able to share my knowledge about ichimoku kinko hyo and also my own strategy kts to uh for your help to be able to um become a non-losing trader mindset so yeah i will continue to do my best to share my knowledge and also um share my views about the markets in my youtube channel so once again i really thank you so much so yeah so let's see um so today i want to talk about the journaling the trace but before that, um, let me quickly say that the, uh, you know, this content all is based on my own experience. So when you take trades, please do at your own risk. And also, since this is a video session, uh, if you can please follow the rules and guidelines in the comment box, that would be great. Because after all, we're all here to learn. So, uh, yeah. So today, I would like to talk about journaling the trades on this video. And uh, the reason is because I got one of the comments from, um, hold on, on the YouTube comment. And I thought this is a good timing to talk about that topic. So let me show you, let me introduce uh, which comment I got from one of the traders on YouTube. So let me put that one up here. Hold on. Yeah, so... Uh, Oh, and why I'm looking for the post, um, I will be doing a special live stream to celebrate over 50k subscribers on my YouTube channel next Tuesday. On 22nd next Tuesday, I will do that. And I already announced it on, the, on my YouTube channel, which is here. Um, if you can go to community simply, uh, and scroll down and uh, you can have this post and this is what I wrote here. So, uh, yeah, hold on, let me squeeze. Yeah, so this is what I wrote. So, yeah, the special live stream is going to be a very long, maybe five hours, six hours, six hours long. And uh, I will do that at 8 a.m. UTC next Tuesday, 22nd February. So, for those who are joining, from Asian countries, Asian session, Asian countries can also join the live stream real time. And uh, I might be trading if the market is good, I will be trading. And so we can trade together or we can discuss market together for long hours uh, per day so that uh, you can kind of trace how I view the market and how I take trades and exit. So yeah, if you want to join, please uh, feel free to go to this page, this, go to this community post and set a reminder so that uh, you can uh, you get not notification uh, when this live stream, special live stream happens. And I also posted this on my Twitter account, so you can find the same post on my Twitter. Okay, so um, hold on, let me... I think it's this one. Yeah. 
Okay, I found it. So, um, yeah, so let me squeeze and put this one up here. So this is a post I got a couple of, uh, uh, yesterday actually, yesterday from uh, Kush. is the YouTube uh, account name. And uh, he says, um, I've been watching this video from midnight. Didn't expect to watch all of it, but K, you are a very good teacher. Your content is very addictive. Addictive, okay. And I'm always learning something new. Okay, very glad to hear that. Very glad to hear that. Yeah, I try my best to share my knowledge, share my, you know, experience. Because, you know, after all, you know, I can all talk about based on experience. If I don't experience something, then I can't talk about it. So my words are purely, purely based on my own uh, experience for, for the last eight years of my trading career. So he says, please, can you do a video of your trading journal on how we can create one for ourselves? Stay gold. Okay. So, uh, yeah, so that's the question. So how to create a trading journal for ourselves? So speaking of that, I have my own spreadsheet. I think I've, I, I think I introduced this a couple of times in my previous lives of videos, but, um, here is my spreadsheet and this is my trading journal and I created this I think it was the original I created was um, yeah like uh, back in seven or six years ago I created this one and I kept refining I kept refining I kept Kaizen on the spreadsheet and this is how it looks right now and uh, this spreadsheet itself is only available for the GTS members for training purpose. But um, you don't have to create this kind of spreadsheet. You can only focus on three numbers on the spreadsheet and that is totally fine. So this is a spreadsheet and I uh, track the journal or track the uh, trace, every trace I track by the spreadsheet. and. Uh, I, what information I put is I put this pair a name, name of the pair, name of the pair and date in time of the trade and buy or sell and entry price and stop loss and lot size. And then I also put the price. Then everything is calculated like this. All the other parts are calculated because I have the uh, calculation built uh, on the spreadsheet, but uh, the things you, you have to track is um, that the name of the pair and also entry date. If, uh, if you want to put also, you can put the exit date in time also. I don't really care about the exit time. I only care about the entry. Uh, but so uh, you can put that. And also you can put the price level of entry and exit and stop loss pips and the lot size. And exit price yeah so uh, this is in January because I was down under COVID uh, I was able to trade only after I recovered from COVID which was only like uh, you know uh, seven days or so but uh, so I only took four trades because I happened to see some trends uh, in the last last week of the January so I took four trades and uh, yeah this is my result so I had the big winner, uh, Euro USD. On my second trade, I got 82.3 pips, or technically 82 pips of profit, and that was a big winner. And the rest were very small, loss or break even or um, win. Uh, only three pips of win, only nine pips of loss, only 11, 12 pips of loss and break even. So the rest were very small as compared to this big winner. And this is my trade psychology is that I'm a trend follower. I'm not a scarper, I'm a trend follower. So I follow the trend on higher time frames and look for the entry edge by the lower time frame confirmations. So the number of my trades are very small. Um, usually I take 10 to 15 trades per month, but my returns are usually 10% in average. In fact, uh, in the month of January, uh, because I, I, although I was under COVID, uh, my performance, I started from a th uh, 350k 
and I, the ending balance was 382k. So my return was almost 10% or 11% was my performance in January. So, uh, but speaking of what to what to track, which number to track, um, I think three. I think uh, three numbers are important in your trading journal, and one is. So I have the memo here. Hold on. I just created the memo before I do the video. So uh, this is just a notepad. But uh, you can just focus on these three numbers whenever you try to create the spreadsheet on your own. So first, uh, you want to check the profit factor. So profit factor for the PF, usually also I call PF, is the profit divided by the loss so that's the profit factor so let's say i mean profit factor profit and loss in money so this is not in pips but this is in money so um let's say on your overall trades in the month of january if your profit is let's say 20 20 dollars and your loss was let's say ten dollars i mean i mean um, the overall overall together you put together win and loss and you won twenty dollars overall you lost ten dollars overall then the pf is two twenty divided by ten is two so your profit factor is two so this profit factor is very important because it shows the risk and reward the ratio overall on your trade as an ending result you know speaking of the risk reward ratio you know we tend to focus before we take trades like before we take trades you put the stop loss let's say stop loss is 20 pips then your reward should be more than one to two so that would be like more than 40 pips or maybe 60 pips would be one to three risk and reward in terms of pips and i used to do that but um, it didn't really work for me, actually. Sometimes the market doesn't reach there. Sometimes the market just exceeds. And um, the market, you know, does not really, you know, uh, you know, hit exactly at the risk and reward ratio before we take, take trades. So I don't really calculate the risk and reward ratio before I trade, but I value the risk and reward ratio after number of trades. Uh, in money not the in the pips but in money i value so in the months of um oh so hold on so i i think i better talk about the back testing first so when you back test on trading view or the uh forex tester i recommend everybody to trade 100 100 times you take 100 trades in back test and then get the profit fa factor of five profit factor of five out of 100 trades and then you should be safe enough you should be safe enough to to trade on the real moving market because the pf in the real trades will be decreased a lot i think that will go down to maybe three or maybe 2.5 is realistic so better to have profit factor five in back testing is the first goal you should achieve and simply you take number of trades you take 100 trades and you pick all the winning trades you picked all losing trades and just add all the win winning trades winning profits and add all the losing uh, you know all the loss in in over uh, in uh, within 100 trades and then you just divide it and you get the profit factor this is very simple very simple a calculation so um, without spreadsheet you can do this so yeah so, so make sure you have pf5 to be able to trade and make profits in the real trades if you have pf5 then you don't have to have the win rate of like a 40 percent or 30 percent even if your win rate is 20 percent you should be still winning the trade over time so that's why on the second one i don't really look at the win rate but if it's too low then that's a problem if it's like 10 percent or five percent that is problem 
So uh, if you have win rate of, I would say, 40 to 30 percent, I think that that should be just enough. 30 to 40 percent of win rate is just enough. And the last number that I really value is a max drawdown per trade. So max drawdown is the trade. Uh, so when you trade uh, and when you have a loss, you have some drawdown. And I want to know what was the maximum drawdown I had per trade in the month of January or February or any month. So this one, actually, you can get this in the report from the, uh, the, the, spre uh, the spreadsheet you get from, you can download on MT5, MT4, uh, you can do that. And also, you can find the number in the um, Forex tester when you backtest. Actually, profit factor win rate drawdown, you can find these numbers when you backtest in the Forex tester or when you trade on the MT4, MT5. So you can also refer to these. Um, so in my rules, uh, the drawdown per trade, the max, the maximum drawdown per trade should be less than 1% is my rule. So I take two trades and I take 1% uh, risk per each trade. So in maximum, I take 2%. But because I take two trades at the same time, and that's why each Position should be 1%. So less than 1% if you take two trades, and less than 2% if you take one trade. But this max drawdown per trade is very, very important. Because if your drawdown is 10%, for example, then you are poor at the risk management. So make sure to keep the max drawdown very small so that you, when you win the profits in the future, the pro future big profits can cover the previous small losses so that's the drawdown so i i value the profit factor and win rate and max drawdown per trade and i actually look at also r multiple which is uh you know uh risk and reward ratio in terms of pips i would also look at it but uh these are uh, my three main uh, important numbers when i look back my trades so and the reason why I don't use the download version of the um, you know, spreadsheet you, where you can get from MT5, MT4 or Forex Tester is that um, I want to track my record everything. I want to track my record every time I take trace. So every time I take trace, I open this spreadsheet and I put these numbers. And the reason is to remember my trace. If I don't put, the num if I don't put this information, then I tend to forget and I tend not to really look back my trace. But uh, if I just keep, if I just write out this, all the pairs and date and time and price level and lot size and peps, then, uh, you know, sometimes I realize myself that, the, okay, the risk is too big. Sometimes I realize, or sometimes, you know, this is Euro USD. Oh, there's a, you know, Euro news happens in 30 minutes, I remember. And for this purpose, I like to write down before I trade so that I can remember uh, the other information on the trading as well. And that's one of the reasons why I want to track my record on the spreadsheet. And also, I want to take the break even as a loss. So here, this Euro USD I took on the 24th of January, um, I had one break even trade. And I want to count the break-even as loss. You know, break-even is break-even, uh, you know, in general. But uh, technically, break-even is not a break-even. And what I mean is, for example, uh, let's say the market goes up this way, and I take a buy. The market breaks the previous high and goes up, and marks the next end wave bullish, and then that's the timing or I usually move this stop loss to break even. Break even means I put the stop loss slightly above the position so that even if the market goes backwards for any reasons, I don't lose. So this is like the seat belt on my trading. So uh, this is what I call the break even. But uh, technically I win. I win two pips or three pips. So I move 
the stop loss to two or three pips above the position and the reason is because to cover the spread. When I take trades, usually the broker spreads always or always the broker takes spreads, maybe two pips, three pips, sometimes four pips. So depending on the spread that's offered from the broker, I put the break even slightly above the position. But if the market retraces backwards all the way and hit the break even, I get technically a small pips. And in the spreadsheet I get from the from the platform uh, MT4, MT5, or, uh, or Forex Tester, uh, it's counted as win. But for me, this is not a win. For myself, this is not a win. This is break even, and break even should be counted as loss with my strategy. And that's another reason why I track my record and spreadsheets. So technically, I put the entry, my entry was 1.1308, there are eight two, and technically the exit was slightly above um, the position, but by putting the same number or as entry price here as exit price, 1.13082, then this part is counted as break even, and uh, this is also counted as loss. Because I want to purely focus on the winning trades, and uh, this is another reason why I want to, wanted to create, create my own trading journal. But um, this, is based, based, uh, this is because my strategy is built in that way. If your, if your, strategy, if your strategy is not really care, is not really care about the, doesn't really care about the break-even trades, uh, then you can just uh, you know uh, use only you can just focus on these three numbers: profit factor, and win rate, and max order per trade. So uh, yeah, because I count break even as loss, the win rate uh, is you know uh, you know much much worse than the actual win rate because technically that break even trade should be counted as win, but I don't count. I don't. I count it as a loss, and that's why this part is a bit decreased. But uh, the month of January, so I took only four trades, and uh, my win rate was thirty seven point fifty percent. Uh, I got three wins and four losses and one break even. So this was this was uh, my average. My average is between thirty to forty percent for the win rate. So this is average. But uh, my profit factor was seven point four eight, and this is the most important part. You have to have PF above five in the back testing, and ideally on the real trades, you have to have the PF. Five or three above at least, so that uh, you never lose, even if your winning rate is, you know, very low. So uh, yeah, so once again, unfortunately, this spreadsheet is only available for the GTS members, uh, Global Trading School members, because I share this spreadsheet to track their records and I make comments on their records, and for this reason, I only share it to the members, but. Um, once again, you don't have to have this kind of spreadsheet. Only focus on these three numbers. So once again, profit factor and win rate and max drawdown per trade. And then you should be fine. So this is my answer to uh, this question about the how to create a journal for yourselves. So yeah, I am very much a manual person, so I don't really use robots or EAs or I don't automate my trade. All my trades are done manually. I don't even use the limit orders. I don't use the pending orders. I my enter the market, I manually screen chart first and then put the entry manually, put the stop loss manually and I exit manually too. But sometimes the market just hit the stop loss in that case, we can call it as a you know automatic exit, but uh, if not, I exit manually by pressing the exit button. So uh, basically, I prefer to do things manually so that I can remember my trace and I can look back my psychology, and also um, I can build up my confidence in this way. Sometimes you know when you get the this was my experience when I was newbie. Is that the uh, you know I took number of trades and I get this uh, journal from MT5 
And when I look at the spreadsheet uh, with the graph and all the data, you know, sometimes, you know, I don't remember. Okay, why did, did I try this one? Why did I exit here? Sometimes I don't remember. Uh, but after I track all my records on the spreadsheet, I start to remember exactly what the trades were and uh, what the losses were. And it's easier for me to look back the losing patterns too. Sometimes I get the losing patterns on my previous trades. So that is also a good information to refine your exit strategy, for example. So uh, yeah, I recommend everybody to do things manually. I think we are very in a convenient world where you know, uh, you know, things are done automatically. But I recommend to do things manually also so that uh, you can find something new on these processes. So yeah, that was something I wanted to talk about today. So I briefly shared my uh, journaling, my trace uh, tips. So uh, yeah, I hope you liked the video. So uh, yeah, once again, Thank you for your uh, support and comments also. If you liked it, please press the like, bu like button before you leave. And I will see you on the next one. So until then, please stay healthy and stay safe. And stay gold, everyone. All right, bye for now. Mata ne. Thank you.